Very good. You know, I can't say it enough. This has just been a great discussion. We've reviewed and discussed a lot of information on advances in second line and later line treatment options in metastatic colorectal cancer. To close though, gang, I want to give each of you an opportunity uh, for some final thoughts. So, Johanna, you get to go first again. Um, check your expanded KRAS, check your BRAF mutated patients. For the BRAF mutated patients, try to get them to a trial center if you can. And Realize that even though we talked about some new agents coming, there's a lot more in the pipeline, and the more that we're able to get folks on clinical trial, the more we're going to learn about this disease to beat it. Great. Hi, it, it is an exciting time. Molecular revolution in the middle of it. I think we will, over time, learn much more who to select for what targeted treatment. It's a full pipeline with new targeted drugs. When we put both together, our molecular biology understanding and the right patient and the right target, I think we make big progress. Who's going to teach us about molecular profiling when we get these, these reports? Johanna. OK, good. I just want to make sure somebody's there to tell us what all the data means. Gets harder at the end of the table, right? So, so I, think, I think the message would be for me is to sit down with your patients, put down your your endpoints, your target, and because there's really quite a few options at each line of treatment. And it's very important to kind of listen to your patient and make sure that what you're doing is in line of what they're looking at. Because it, the strategies, it's a great time because we have so many options. And, and it's really an art. Alan, home field advantage, you get to bat last. Well, I think the it's a multidisciplinary disease. Get your experts together. Uh, even if you don't think it's a resectable metastatic disease, make sure the others agree. Should you take the and the vice versa, and vice you know, versa, push the ones that yeah. absolutely is the primary to be left in place or not? These are all in play. I think uh, the critical question is you don't want to miss an opportunity to make a big difference in patients. So always think: uh, is there something the patient can learn from another opinion at the at the nearby center? And make sure, as Johanna said, that these patients have access to clinical research. If we don't put patients on study, we don't answer any of these questions. Yeah, and I might just add, you know, there are a lot of nice resources out there for, for patients. There's some improving websites. The advocacy groups are getting better. Uh, we're getting runs where we're raising money, where we're starting to uh, build a research portfolio and partnering with our patients. So I think all of us need to, like we do over there in the pink ribbon crowd, uh, need to begin uh, doing uh, engaging our patients in this discussion for clinical trial uh, recruitment for helping us raise money and helping us to uh, uh, really move the bar for, for our folks uh, going out there. So make sure and engage your patients. So gang, on behalf of our just fabulous panel, we thank you for joining us and we hope you found this peer exchange informative.